So what is a fat embolism? Well, we've talked a lot about embolisms and thrombi and blood clots. And so a fat embolism is just a, a chunk of fat that gets inside your blood or your circulatory system and creates a clog. And usually these fat embolism happens because of fractures of long bones which contain fatty marrow or after soft tissue trauma. So if you have soft tissue trauma that's severe or long bone fractures that are severe, you can get fat emboli. And let's talk about types of fractures. Well, first just let's discuss let's discuss what is a long bone. A long bone is by definition uh, a bone that is longer in length than it is the width. Length, width. That's the definition of a long bone. What are some examples? Well, you have your leg bones, your arm bones, hands, hand bones, feet bone. If you want more medical definitions, the leg bone, you know, the femur, the tibia, fibula, the arm, if you got the humerus, the uh, radius, and the ulna. And in your hands, you got your metacarpals, your phalan phalanges, and then the feet, you got your metatarsal bones and your phalanges. So those are long bones. So if you break one of those, or if you have uh, a soft tissue trauma, muscles that, that, that are damaged anyway, you can get fat emboli. Now, just a review, what are some types of fractures? You can have an open fracture like this, closed fracture where it's just a uh, split through the bone, compression fracture where these, these two ends come in on each other and bust out to the side, pieces bust out that way. You can have a stress fracture where this muscle is very, very uh, uh, tight over long periods of times and it can cause a fracture. There you have an avulsion fracture where a tendon uh, rips off um, rips off a chunk of bone due to due to uh, com uh, strong force in this direction a grain strict fracture where this end goes like this this end goes like this and it compresses here and it opens up on this side transverse fracture which is like a close but it goes all the way through and there's actually space there comminuted is just you know, there's some kind of compressor and it just shatters pretty much. It shatters all the bone around in here. Impacted is where they kind of come together in the sense of a compression fracture, but they just kind of they don't they don't blow out pieces, they just kind of become enlarged here. And there's torus fractures and spiral fractures and there's all ty types of fractures. But the reason why I wanted to show you this is because there's a lot of ways in which you can fracture long bones. And in 90% of severe fractures, long bone fractures, only 10% have symptoms of fat emboli. And we'll discuss what those symptoms are later. The, the, it's believed that how these, these fat globules, these fat substances get into the circulation is that imagine this is well this is a capillary bed and imagine that you, know, you have severe trauma to some kind of muscle well then this is going to rip in half and some of this blood is it's thought here's a venule right here and it's thought that this fat embolism enters somewhere in here inside the venules and then once it gets sucked up into the venous system, then it, it can, you know, this fat embolism can clog somewhere and, and you know, cause infarction and ischemia. Now in the case of this is a bone, you can review some bone anatomy to get a better idea of what this bone looks like. But there's osteons, there's lacuna, there's aversion canals, there's, uh, you know, there's certain types and certain names that are common on tests but mainly you got your bone structure here 
your bone, and then inside your bone you have arteries and veins, and you have blood vessels going in and out, because this is where hematopoiesis, where your blood cells and other cells are formed, and they need to get into the circulation. So at the same point when there's a there's kind of a capillary here, there's sinusoids inside the bone. And the sinusoid is kind of like a capillary where it's very uh, porous and things can transfer in and things can oh, transfer out of the bone. And where those sinusoids are, if you imagine if you have an open fracture, you know, you you let me get another picture another color here you fracture the bone through this direction while you just broke off all these blood vessels inside and then fat that's inside because it has fatty marrow inside of long bones enters into the venous return and can cause these fat emboli now let's discuss what fat embolism syndrome is so if you have uh, a long bone fracture or soft tissue trauma, you might develop fat embolism syndrome. And remember, 90% of severe trauma of long bones get fat emboli, but only 10% show signs and symptoms. How do we diagnose, I guess, fat embolism syndrome? Well, you have pulmonary insufficiency, so difficulties breathing, blood supply to the lungs is is hindered. You have neurological symptoms. You have anemia. So if you run the blood, uh, if you do some blood tests, you can see if the patient's anemic. And you have thrombocytopenia, low platelet. And 10% of these cases are fatal with a fat emboli syndrome. So the symptoms usually appear one to three days after an injury of severe uh, trauma, this mus skeletal, musculoskeletal trauma. You have tachnea, dyspnea, and tachycardia. So you have increased breathing rate, you have a difficulty breathing, or you have an increased heart rate. Some neurological symptoms include irritability and restlessness, and it usually progresses to delirium or a coma. So that's kind of fat embolism syndrome in a nutshell, and that happens because uh, you have fractured a long bone or you have significant uh, soft tissue trauma. The pathogenesis, so if we talked about the pathogenesis, if we talk about the pathogenesis of fat embolism, there's two main components of that. Say you have a blood vessel here, and you have a fat globule that clogs a blood vessel here. That is sheer mechanical obstruction. That's one part of the pathogenesis of fat embolism, is the fat globule blocks mechanically obstructs the blood flow here. So there's no no blood beyond beyond here unless you have collateral circulation. The other thing is once this fat globule kind of gets lodged here, if you will, then there is free fatty acid release. Free fatty acid release which then causes kind of a biochemical irritation. So you have a biochemical irritation because of this free fatty acid release, which then you know uh, causes free radicals, can cause the arachidonic acid cycle to progress, and so there's more of a biochemical irritation that goes along with this mechanical obstruction of fat embolism. And this free fatty release, which will cause this irritation around this endothelium here, and which also, because of this fat globule being embedded or clogged, if you will, mechanically obstruct the blood flow here, well then you're gonna have platelet aggregation, uh, platelet recruitment, you're gonna have this coagulation and inflammation processes occur simultaneously. So that is fat embolism in a nutshell, 
and it mostly happens because you have fractured a long bone or you have had significant soft tissue trauma. We'll see you in the next video.